Hey guys, so this is going to be a review of Mystic River by Dennis Lehane. I just finished reading this yesterday and I really, really loved it a lot. First Dennis Lehane I've ever read and I am really excited to talk about it. So there are these three kids, Sean Devine, Jimmy Marcus, and Dave Boyle living in Boston. Both Jimmy and Dave live in a somewhat poor neighborhood called The Flats, while Sean lives in a slightly more wealthy neighborhood in which all three boys spend most of their time. All three boys have very distinct personalities. Sean is just generally a nice kid and tends to get what he wants, not that he's spoiled or anything. He's just not used to some of the things that, say, Jimmy and Dave are used to, living in slightly poorer families. Jimmy is a bit of a thrill seeker, jumps on active railroad tracks, thinks about doing criminal things like taking a car, taking it for the joyride, etc. His mother is gone and his father is a bit of an asshole, and Jimmy just generally does whatever he wants. Dave is a bit attached to Jimmy at the hip, and has this way about him that just kind of makes him feel like he's very unlucky, like he doesn't belong. Jimmy likes Dave, though kind of forgets that he's there sometimes, and Sean is a bit confused as to why Dave is there, and very often forgets that he's there. One day, Jimmy, after Sean's parents tell Sean not to leave the neighborhood with Jimmy after a sort of incident. The boys playing in front of Sean's house suggests that they break into a car and take it for a ride around the block. Well, first of all, they're like 12 and Sean doesn't want to do it. Dave, of course, wanting to please Jimmy, is all for it. Takes Jimmy's side and just does whatever Jimmy wants him to. Boys begin to argue and fight when a car drives up with two men in it. One gets out, shows them a police badge, and asks them what the hell they're doing. He asks where they live, if they live in this neighborhood, and do their mothers know what they've been up to. Sean says he lives right there, and Jimmy lies and says the same. And Dave, kind of incapable of being dishonest with this cop right now, says he lives in the flats. The cop tells Dave to get in the car. They're going to take Dave home and tell his mother what he's been doing. Jimmy and Sean let him go, and Dave isn't seen again until he escapes from those men four days later. After that, Dave is really never the same again. He just has this aura of not fitting in with anybody, and people pick on him, people bully him. They see him as different and weird, especially after having had this happen to him, they see him as damaged goods. He barely talks to Sean and Jimmy anymore, and that's all like just like the beginning, the very beginning of the book and we skip immediately ahead 25 years to when they're all grown up. Sean is a homicide detective recently off of suspension for reasons that aren't really given to us right away and his wife has recently left him. Jimmy has been in and out of prison. Having used to run a thieving crew, people kind of considered him to be a genius at doing this. But he's given all that up though because he now has a family. His first wife Marita died when he was in prison but they had a little girl together had a daughter named Katie. Jimmy now owns a convenience store and is married to Anna Beth who he has two more daughters with. Dave is married to Celeste, Annabeth's cousin, has a son named Michael, and only ever really talks to Sean or Jimmy in passing, and is a, a bit of a loner, and just kind of seems to have something a bit off about him. One day, Jimmy's oldest daughter, Katie, goes missing. Sean is put on the case with his boss, Whitey Powers, and Dave comes home to Celeste the night of Katie's disappearance, covered in someone else's blood, claiming that he had been mugged. Basically, the story follows all three of these men and their families and a few other people trying to piece together what happened to Katie. This was just such a great read. I basically just summarized the very beginning of the book, and there's just so much more that happens in the story throughout the entirety of it. I love the way it was written. Dennis Lee Hain has this really great ability to give you two things, two like situations or two events, without really giving you how they relate to each other, or if they actually are related, to kind of let you infer what may have happened for yourself. And he does this really often and really, really well, to the point where it kind of makes you question everything you think you know, question everything that happens and where it might all be going. It creates a lot of suspense and a lot of mystery, and we kind of follow all these characters going through all of the evidence, all of their suspicions, etc., as they piece together what actually happened like right in front of our eyes, and it's just so much fun to read about. I really loved all of the characters. They were all really vivid, and they all resonated with me in some way. I mean, this is written in the third-person perspective, but it switches off following the various characters. Mostly the three men, Sean, Jimmy, and Dave, and we see the thoughts of, like, all three of them. They're completely different personalities. They're completely different perspectives into all of what is happening. All three voices are just really, really distinct and distinguishable, and all three characters are just really fun to read about. You know, like, sometimes you get multiple perspectives in a book. They switch off, and, and, and most of the time you kind of have a little sort of favorite perspective that you like to read from. That happens quite often with me, at least, where if a book is switching off, 
know if I have favorite perspectives that I like to read from, and but with this book, it's one of those cases where every single one of the perspectives is interesting, and every single one of the, the perspectives is fun to read from. All three of them were great, and the rest of the characters that we get this perspectives of were great. There wasn't a single moment where I felt bored or uninterested in what they all had to say and what they all thought. It just kept me interested like the entire time. I love the vibes of it. I couldn't put it down most of the time, and I, I really enjoyed the way it ended. I thought everything, everything that happened that led up to it made the ending really solid. I gave the book 5 out of 5 stars and I loved it. And then I watched the movie last night. It was directed by Clint Eastwood, written by Brian Hegeland, and starred uh, Kevin Bacon as Sean, Sean Penn as Jimmy Marcus, and Tim Robbins as Dave. I wasn't sure what to think about the movie when I first got into it. At first, I honestly really didn't like it. I mean, I didn't like the beginning at all. They changed the beginning and I just really didn't like what they did with it. The editing was just really terrible. I could tell that right off the bat. The pacing was just so off. And I like, used these awful dissolves, these fade-in and fade-outs that just did not work at all. I started liking it a bit more the more I got into it, though. I really liked Tim Robbins as Dave. Even from the get-go, I really liked him as Dave. I kind of went in knowing that I would like him as Dave. I did not think I would like Sean Penn as Jimmy or Kevin Bacon as Sean, but both of them surprised me. Sean Penn more than Kevin Bacon. Bacon was alright, but not anything special if I'm being completely honest. Sean Penn was a great Jimmy though. He captured Jimmy's character really, really well. I mean, it was a little bit different than it was in the book, but the way it was written in the movie, he captured it really well. He played it really well. The supporting characters were alright. I first didn't like Lawrence Fishburne as uh, Sean's boss, Whitey Powers, but he did really grow on me as the film went on. He, I thought he did a really great job by the end of the movie. They kept a lot of the dialogue from the book, which was really nice. But the things that they did change just were kind of lame and didn't work very well. The screenplay just was kind of uh, not very good in my opinion. I mean, everything that was good about it had already been in the book and everything that was different was just eh. I'm not sure if it was the writing's fault or the editing's fault throughout the entire thing, but the pacing was just really off throughout it, at least for me anyway. I mean, the book had a really great pacing. It, had, it, it knew exactly when to tell you things, when to show you things, when to let you know certain things, but the movie just, it just felt really off. The movie just didn't really seem to know what it was doing sometimes. The cinematography was really nice. I mean, it wasn't anything like really special or really groundbreaking or anything, but there was definitely a lot of really nice images. One of my biggest complaints was the music. The music was fucking terrible. It was so bland and just did absolutely nothing at all for me. And it plays during pretty much the entire movie. There's hardly any silent moments during the movie where there's no music. And it just didn't work. It was a bit shitty overall really bland like I said, but overall the movie was alright. Not a bad adaption of the book at all, not a bad movie at all, but not necessarily great. Though I did really like Sean Penn and Tim Robbins in it. Anyway, that's everything I had to say to book review and a book to movie comparison. Let me know if you've read the book or seen the movie, or both, and I'd definitely be interested in hearing opinions if you're at all interested in reading or watching this now. Either way, I'm definitely going to be reading more Dennis Lehane in the future. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon.